Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get instant notification of new videos as they're released. So one thought that I've had this week, uh, which was interesting, I was having a discussion on Wednesday with somebody and they were talking about attitudes to risk and how did I get my attitude to risk um, and how can they achieve that attitude and you know what is a balanced risk taker and how do you strike that balance and so on and so forth. And um, I just recounted a story from, from my past that I think may or may not resonate with people that are out there. And it was all to do with uh, my upbringing. And I actually think that my upbringing uh, created a big problem for me in terms of risk taking. So my parents were uh, very much into discipline and that was a, a problem for me. And they always felt that I should be polite and do the right things and I would get punished. I mean, not badly punished, but it was certainly frowned upon very badly if I didn't do exactly as I was told and I didn't conform to exactly what they were looking for. And sometimes, especially if you're young, that's very difficult. You don't understand the world properly. You don't figure out how these things work until you're a bit older. So I grew up with this sort of... Uh, intolerance to risk because always the fear that I had would that I would get punished if something went wrong and in fact that wasn't a good preparation for me in, in the rest of life because the issue that you have when you're adopting that sort of approach is there's an easy way to minimize risk and that is not to do anything or not to do anything that would bring that punishment forward so the problem was I was very risk averse when I was young and as I grew into my teens that continued. It was uh, considered too risky for me to do something that was unusual or would step outside of the boundaries and so on and so forth. But in fact as I matured and went off into the big side, the big wide world, started to get more serious jobs and so on and so forth, was I actually cottoned on that actually taking risks was good as long as they were appropriate risks. So if you went into something open-minded and you sort of said, well, I'm gonna do this, but it could fail, then in fact, what you'd actually uh, learn was that that was okay, because that is the way that you found opportunities. You would say, well, let's try this. Okay, that didn't work. Well, let's try that. Okay, that didn't work. Well, let's try this. That did work. Let's do that. And from a risk perspective, if I carried forward what I learned when I was young, I would basically have said, let's not try anything because we run the risk that it could go wrong. And that's actually totally the wrong attitude uh, to risk whatsoever. And I remember uh, being sent on a sales course uh, once and I never particularly liked sales because I was risk averse. And w the thing I didn't like about sales was you would get rejected all of the time. And you know, you've, it, it didn't do much for your self-esteem if people kept telling you to bugger off basically. <laughs> So sales wasn't a great job for somebody that was particularly risk averse because every, you know, every time you went to uh, do anything related to making a sale, you would fear being rejected because you'd been brought up and taught that actually, you know, you, that, was, that was bad. And that, uh, uh, you know, it was just not a conducive uh, situation to be in, basically. But what this sales course actually taught me uh, was quite interesting because they were saying, okay, you know, you're, if you phoned 10 clients or you spoke to 10 clients, then probably only one of them will say yes. So rather than focusing on the nine that say no, why don't you look at the next 10 calls as being another step closer to a yes? And in fact, that is probably uh, an appropriate way to look at risk as well. You know, you may not get everything perfect, but you know that the opportunity is there. And if you work hard enough, then you tend to find it. So yeah, my attitude to risk has changed quite dramatically over the years. I've moved from this very risk averse, don't want to do anything that would create a problem, into somebody that isn't totally gun ho but I'm willing to try anything and, and, and I will learn from it. I'll do something and I say, what happened there? Why didn't that work? Well, can I figure out why that didn't work? Well, okay, let's modify that and try it again. And you know, through belligerence to a certain extent, you try all these strategies, you begin to figure out the structure of what you're doing and then you start to pursue it more aggressively. So yeah, you know, my attitude to risk now is it's a very balanced situation. Some things go wrong, some things go right. You're just trying to tip yourself slightly more in the favor of the things that go right. And in order to do that, you have to take some risk. And necessarily that's a big thing that's changed for me over the years is I used to be very risk averse and now I've got a, a, a 
really nice approach to risk. I'm willing to take it. I'm not fearful of it. Um, and one thing that you learn is even if you trade at random, for example, if you truly trade at random, in other words, you're not letting yourself influence what you do, then in fact, uh, the worst situation that you end up with over the very long term is you break even. And, um, you know, that's not a terrible situation to be in. You won't lose enormous amounts of money if you do anything uh, completely at random in a free market. And therefore, that gives you the courage to go out and try it. You should try it too. You should fire up Bet Angel, create some simple automation, play around with the automation and detach yourself from that process. Just go back and look at it later in the day figure out what happened. And what you'll realize is, is, in fact, even if you have the dumbest strategy you could ever possibly imagine, it never tends to lose that much money. If, if you're, you know, um, backing an outsider at 100 to 1, you'll actually find that you get winners in much more frequently than you would possibly imagine. OK, it may not be a long term profitable strategy, but you'll find that things begin to balance out fairly quickly and that will help your approach to risk. So if you're afraid of risk or you think that you have a problem with risk, what I suggest is try some simple automated strategies because you will learn a lot from them because you don't interfere with them and definitely don't interfere with it because you'll be modifying the behavior of the results. You'll actually find that a lot of risk that you take actually has a balance to it and that will enable you to be more comfortable with taking risk and understand what you need to, to do to influence that positively. So yeah, that's the message I give with you is um, don't be afraid to take risk. Uh, don't let anything that's happened in the past influence that and detach yourself with it by using things like automation to give you a better view of the market without any intrinsic unhelpful biases that you have. And that should give you a lot of insight into any market that you choose to trade. If you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, its tools and the opportunities they present, then why not visit BetAngel.com today and download a free trial.